nobody can dream as big as little boys can. From the karate craze of the 80s, becoming a soldier like G.I. Joe, having super strength and flying through the air like Superman, or the Avengers, depending on which comic book company you support, little boys have dreams of what they want to become in a soon-to-be fleeting fantasy world as they grow older. Not all of us have become superheroes or the Karate Kid, and those of us who became soldiers figured out very quickly that it's not all it's cracked up to be. What happens when that dream is so vivid and enduring that it carries over into real life when you grow up? We are going to find out today with the incredible story of a little boy whose dream has become a reality and has catapulted him into the forefront of innovation and technological excellence. This is the story of Christian von Koenigsegg, and this was that moment when he knew he had to make his dream come true. Christian Erland Harald von Koenigsegg was born in Stockholm, Sweden on July 2, 1972. Koenigsegg, who is destined to become royalty in his chosen profession, has actual links to the Swedish royal family. In the 11th century, the von Koenigsegg family fought in the German army, which is where the name Koenigsegg originated. In the 15th century, the queen bestowed a coat of arms upon Luthold von Koenigsegg. This coat of arms was passed down through Koenigsegg's lineage as his family insignia and would later become his company's logo. Inspiration sometimes comes in surprising forms, none as surprising as the correlation between puppets and some of the most innovative supercars on the planet. Yes, you heard that right, puppets and supercars. Two years before Christian von Koenigsegg was born, another innovator was making his name in an industry his family had been in for decades. Ivo Caprino was a film director and writer from Norway, who was best known for his puppet movies. Caprino was born in Oslo to an Italian furniture designer and Ingeborg Ingsa Caprino, an artist who was the granddaughter of painter Hans Gouda. Ingsa Gouda was a watercolorist, illustrator, puppet maker, and writer. Midway through the 1940s, Caprino helped his mother in designing puppets for a puppet theater, which inspired him to produce a movie using his mother's designs. Evo drew inspiration from the surplus puppets to create his first animated film, Tim Agtitha, in 1948. Caprino invented a method for controlling the puppets' movements in real time during the production of Tim Agtitha. The method can be described as an early mechanical form of animatronics. Caprino's movies garnered positive reviews, and he became an instant celebrity in Norway. In 1970, Caprino and a small team of collaborators began production on a 25-minute TV special based on a series of books by Norwegian illustrator and author Kjell Alkrust. The special featured a cast of eccentric characters who all lived in the small village of Pinchcliffe. The television special consisted of sketches based on Alkrust's novels with no actual plot. After one and a half years of work, it was decided that the TV special did not function as a whole and production was halted. Caprino and Alkrust then decided to write a screenplay for a feature film using the previously constructed characters and environments. The outcome was the Pinchcliffe Grand Prix. Reador Felgen and his two assistants, Solon Gunderson and Ludwig, are the characters in the plot of the stop-motion film. Reador is a bicycle mechanic, but spends the majority of his time creating bizarre contraptions. One day, the three discover that one of Rayador's earlier assistants stole his design for a race car engine and is now a Formula One world champion. The trio then constructs Il Tempo Gigante, a magnificent racing vehicle with two motors, radar, and its own blood bank. Rayador then enters a race, which he ultimately wins. In its first year of distribution in 1975, the film was an enormous success in Norway, selling one million tickets. It remains Norway's highest-grossing film of all time. To date, Caprino Studios claims to have sold 5.5 million tickets. Fast forward to 1977 and a movie theater in Stockholm. A young boy sits wide-eyed, staring at the massive screen in front of him, watching Il Tempo Gigante flying across the screen. Years later, Christian Koenigsegg would say this was that moment that he knew he wanted to build a racing car. When a man characterizes driving a go-kart at the age of six as one of his most memorable childhood experiences, you have to believe in some kind of destiny. In 1979, at the age of seven, his father gave him his first soldering kit and he constructed his first radio-controlled car. 
He was also disassembling tape recorders, VCRs, and anything electronic or mechanical to figure out how it worked. A year later, at age eight, his parents bought a small motorcycle, which Christian disassembled, rebuilt, then sold. In 1984, at the age of 12, he got a Suzuki K50 moped and learned how to modify it. Using this information, he would buy a moped, quote, make it look good, make it go faster, sell it, and buy another one. By age 15, Christian has a stable of 12 mopeds and was the local moped technician. The following year, he bought a small, 2.5-meter-long watercraft named Spitfire with a 5 to 15 horsepower engine. Christian modified it by installing a 35 horsepower engine, a stereo, some lanterns, and a horn before selling it. Christian begins designing automobiles on the family's two computers, a Commodore 64 and an Amiga 1000 around this time. Christian was creative and inventive. One of his earliest concepts is what he refers to as a chip player. He believed that computer memory chips would one day be able to store an entire CD's worth of data and that it would be an affordable method to buy and store music. He conducted patent searches for a musical device that would play chips instead of discs and shared his ideas with others, but no one appeared to be interested in his invention. In the end, Koenigsegg gave up and moved on, unaware that his idea would one day become the norm. In 1991, Koenigsegg traveled to Belgium to visit his father-in-law, who ran a flooring factory. Upon seeing the complex flooring fitting process, Koenigsegg devised a system and named it Click. He presented the idea to his father-in-law, who was uninterested and said someone else could have thought of it a long time ago because it was too simple and practical. Koenigsegg presented his concept to several flooring manufacturers who rejected it. In 1993, Koenigsegg visited a flooring store in Stockholm and discovered his patent displayed in the store. Back home, he conducted an internet search for patents and discovered that his concept had already been patented by Belgian and Swedish companies. They even dubbed it Click. The idea had already been patented three months before he began his search, and he believed it had been stolen. It was reportedly sold for $2 billion. Koenigsegg began his studies at the age of 19, but he felt he had more important things to do than waste his time studying. He began by setting up a business in which he bought frozen poultry from the United States and sold it in Estonia, which turned out to be a very successful endeavor. After the collapse of the Iron Curtain, he also made a profit selling mislabeled and reverse-printed plastic bags, which were in demand in the region. They did not care about the incorrectly printed label because they needed the bags. But being innovative and understanding that he came from a family of entrepreneurs, he decided that it was time for him to make his move and launch his own automobile company, a childhood dream. He focused on establishing his brand in 1993. At the age of 22, Koenigsegg established Koenigsegg Automotive on August 12, 1994. This company started with a young man who had no automobile manufacturing experience and little capital. However, he was equipped with a passion for supreme performance and a desire to create the world's finest sports car. After nearly two years of development, Koenigsegg's CC concept vehicle was tested for the first time in public at an event at Anderstorp Racetrack in 1996. The concept vehicle performed brilliantly and was an excellent way to introduce prospective purchasers to Koenigsegg. Koenigsegg has created many breakthroughs in the automotive industry, several of which have been patented. The triplex rear suspension, the top-mounted active rear wing system, the patented Koenigsegg Synchro Helix Door Actuation System, the patented Rocket Catalytic Converter, the patented Dual Throttle Compressor Pressure Relief System, and the patented Direct Drive Transmission, to name a few. Koenigsegg cars have consistently broken speed records for production cars using these patents on their models. Making the best supercars in the world started out as a boyhood dream, but due to Koenigsegg's tenacity and innovative spirit, that dream has turned into reality. While watching the Pinchcliffe Grand Prix as a bright-eyed five-year-old, Koenigsegg had this was that moment. But never in his wildest dreams would he design a supercar that he asserts can reach speeds of up to 560 kilometers per hour. We wait in anticipation to see if his Yesco Absolute can do it.